On today's video, I'm going to fix the remaining issues with the earthing on these uh, T8280 preheating plate, and also I would like to find out why the fan is making that weird frequency change in noise uh, when the plates are energized. Hello the internet and welcome back to my channel. Today I would like to disassemble this machine and fix those um, earth connection points which I previously fixed in my in a previous video which I'm going to link here and in the description. At the time I didn't want to play too much with the machine because it was brand new just in case you have to go back to the cellar. So I'm going to disassemble it, remove the paint where earth is supposed to be connected between the various parts of the machine but most importantly, I'd like to try and find out why the fan of the machine is making that frequency changing whining noise whenever the panels are being energized. I have a feeling it's an easy fix, but I'd like to have a look at that. So let's go on and disassemble the machine first. So the machine is basically made by these three parts. Uh, this is the base where, where the feet are and the electronic, the PID is. This is the actual heating plate. And then you have the top part where you have the main inlet and also the thermocouple. I believe the thermocouple can be dis disconnected. So let me do that real quick. So thermocouple, yes, is connected to a connector here which I can easily remove. I'm actually impressed that this thing is so nicely put together. Well, I spoke too early because obviously the mains is... Help. The mains here is hardwired. Oh, I think it's soldered into the main switch. So the heating plates are also hardwired here, even though, again, removing them is not a big deal. But the thing is, I really wanted to try this while it's running because I need to measure some voltages. Um, so I don't want to disconnect everything for the time being. I think uh, as, as dangerous it can be, <laughs> I'll have to run it fully open. So I need to find a way to make this work when it's completely open. First thing first, what I'd like to do is to try and find out why is this thing making the, this weird noise. Let's have a look more closely. Right, so this is my, uh, let's call it main board. This is just a um, front panel uh, display. Then I have a solid state relay, uh, which is rated, I believe, well, this is 25, so I'm assuming 25 amps. You can check. So the relay is controlled by the board. The front panel obviously is controlled by the board. Interesting, there is a little trimmer which is being covered by some protection and then we have the fan which fits in here and this one is oh the thermocouple obviously yes what i see here it's a very crappy transformer um this is getting power straight from the uh, mains control uh, switch so the main switch is one end is going to this transformer transformer is powering this little board uh, in parallel one wire is going to the plates and one wire is going to the to the plates through the relay I have a feeling that this small transformer is simply not powerful enough for this board to basically provide power to the fan at a stable voltage. Uh, this thing is a 5 watt transformer, input 220 volts, output 9 volts AC. I want to do a couple of things here. I can see here I have a 9, vol 9 volts in. And then there's a, well, I think it's a full bridge rectifier made of diodes. There's a little capacitor. So I guess that's, that's where the voltage is coming in. And then I see it's an LM2575. Oh yes, it's also written on the PCB. I have a feeling this is a voltage regulator. Let's Google that. Because I think, <laughs> as, as small as this is, this is the power supply basically of the, of the whole system. Now here is the fan. Uh, the fan is a standard 12 volts, 0.12 amps. So let's uh, plug the fan back here. And also let's plug the thermocouple back. The fan is disconnected and it's here, so I can probe the voltage. 
Um, what I would like to do now, I would like to power it up and basically measure the voltage going into the um, board. I have a feeling the power supply is just not capable of keeping the voltage because the board is um, drawing too much power. So hopefully it's just a matter of replacing this horrendous small power supply with something a bit more powerful. Now looking at the board itself and looking at the fan connector, I think I can see that one pin is basically going straight to the capacitor, which is, from what I can see, is the output of this unregulated DC uh, just out of the bridge rectifier. And I'm assuming that the other pin is probably connected to the, like the negative or the same supply. I have my meter in voltage in um, continuity mode. And if I probe one pin and I check on the diodes, I have zero ohms between one of the diodes. And if I check on the other pin and still the diodes, yes, well, I have zero ohms between the bridge rectifier and the fan. So the fan is basically powered by the unregulated DC voltage, which is through a very simple bridge rectifier plus a capacitor. If I'm not mistaken, nine volts AC through uh, a bridge rectifier ends up being 11.3 volts DC. So that's probably where the fan is getting power. And that's why, by the way, the fan is powered all the time. So that makes sense to me, but that also seems to be confirming that simply the power supply is not capable of producing enough voltage or enough power actually for the board and the fan and, and the relay at the same time. Or one other idea could be that simply when the, when the plates are being energized, there's a voltage drop between the socket here. To be honest, these cables, these wires seem chunky enough to withstand the voltage. I'm not expecting really a voltage drop, but it's definitely something we can measure. It's not going to be easy, but maybe I can also measure the the, uh, the input of this power supply to see whether is the, is, is it the 240 dropping a bit, uh, which is obviously causes the power supply to drop a bit. And because the fan is, is completely unregulated, the, the voltage, just goes down and the fan spins down a bit. Well, I guess it's time to do some tests. Please don't do this at home. <laughs> um, but this is, this is the only way I found to have the thermocouple connected back to the board. So the plates are here. The thermocouple is very close to the plates. The control panel is accessible, but I need to pay attention because I've got mains there, I've got mains here, but this is protected. Uh, everything seems to be not too dangerous. Okay, three, two, one, go. So first thing I want to measure is confirm the input voltage from this little power supply. So that's going to be here. There it is. So we got 9.4 volts which should end up being 11.8 volts in DC, unregulated DC. And that I can check on the, basically on the fan connector. No, okay, so we got 10.4 volts at the fan, so the fan is not being overdriven. That's fine. What I'd like to do now is to measure the voltage at the fan terminals uh, while manually powering on and off the heating plates to see if there's any variation within the voltage. Okay, let's power up the plates. Yeah, so 10.1, 10.2 versus 10.4. So that's actually 10.5. It's not a lot. Okay, let's go back to the AC reading from the power supply. It should be directly linked. Well, I got 9.45. AC, more or less, from the power supply. So let's power up the plates. And obviously it goes down 9.2. And plates off. Okay. Well, mm, kind of what you would expect, obviously. My next question is, is it the power supply failing to provide the necessary power to everything and it just drops the voltage a bit? Or is it just a consequence that this machine is drawing 1.6 kilowatts, so maybe it's simply there's a little voltage drop at the, at the plug, simply because you have, you know, you have a kettle lid and then you have some extra wires here. Um, I'm just concerned that I may want to replace the power supply 
and the problem is still there because it's, it's not the power supply dropping, but it's actually the 240 dropping a little bit. So I'm now connected to the main switch after the switch. So if I power up, I read 239.3, which is my mains voltage here. And let's see what happens when I power the plates. 230, oh. well, I guess this is well, this is coming from the mains, from the network. 238, oh wow, so yeah, it is dropping here. 232 with the plates on compared to 238 with plates off. So it may not be a problem with this transformer, it's just the, the mains voltage is dropping and I'm wondering whether it's kind of an unavoidable effect of powering a 1.6 kilowatt machine through mains or whether maybe these wires are on the, sh on the small side. But what I'm doing now, I have this IEC um, which is live at the moment and it's connected to the same power extension. So I'm going to measure the voltage here. So I'm measuring from my IEC, as you can see, it's reading 239 point something. Uh, okay, let's power up the machine again. Okay, so now I'm basically measuring from a mains lead, which ends up on, on, a, on the same uh, power extension. So let's give power to the plates. We are at 239 point something, 235 point something. I think it's a bit less than what it is there because we have what it's on the machine, I mean. So we have 9.5 and with plates on is, we have four volts, a bit less than four volts. It's about four volts. While if I'm measuring here, it's already a bit lower. It's 238 instead of 239. But when I'm powering up the plates, 8.7, it's 5 volts, uh, it's more or less there, you know, it's, it could be an extra, an extra volt, but it's more or less there. So, the thing is, I don't think that replacing the power supply is going to change anything, because the drop is kind of a natural drop, I guess, when you use an appliance on a, on a kettle lead. Okay, so it looks like, how can I say, uh, you know, I was hoping for a, a, a wildly under spec transformer, but maybe this is not so under spec. So I don't think it's worth replacing the power supply. I don't think there's a regulated AC transformer available. I mean, I could probably try and find something that somehow delivers. I don't even know if it's possible, to be honest. The thing is, again, the fan is connected to unregulated 12 volts. So the fan will acoustically transform any voltage drop coming from the mains connector um, through the fan itself. At this point, the, the drop is minimum and it's coming from the main itself. I can't think of a solution for this without going into a very deep hole and probably spending money, which this machine probably doesn't deserve, to be honest. One option is obviously to replace the fan with a quieter one. I couldn't find any information about this one on the internet, so I measured it myself. And uh, it measures around 1500 uh, linear feet per minute, uh, which translates into a 16.5 uh, cubic feet per meter approximately. Now, unfortunately, any quiet fan 40 millimeters I found online, it's uh, rated around four to five cubic feet per minute. So I'm not really happy to replace something uh, which is 16 cubic feet per meter with a, with a five cubic feet per meter. Fair enough. I'm sure this fan hasn't been really designed to be exactly 16. Uh, I would be happy with a 10 cubic feet per meter, but not with a five. And I'm pretty confident that anything which is close closer to 16 cubic feet per meter is going to be as noisy so replacing the fan doesn't seem to be a straightforward option so um i look forward to your comments please if you think differently if you think there's an easy fix for that please do let me know the rest of the video all i'm going to do i'm going to reassemble the machine but this time i'm going to remove the the paint from any earth connection so every time every place where there's a screw attached I'm gonna scrape the paint off with my Dremel. I may want to do the same with this transformer because it's supposed to be earthed. I think I'm gonna loosen the transformer here and just again scrape the paint under it and then just put it back. 
um, I think this should be enough to give a, a little more safety on, on this machine uh, than it was definitely when it was out of the factory. And because I mentioned this last time and I didn't actually, I forgot to fix it, <laughs> let's get rid of the, the leftover of the reflowing from this chip. And I think it's okay now. And there you go. I think I've done everything. So as you can see, I've scraped the paint wherever there is contact between, between the parts. Yes, um, is this overkilled? Probably it is. Um, I don't know. I think, you know, ideally you want to have, when it comes to earth, small jumper leads like this in between parts uh, with a split washer in between the grips on the paint. And I think probably this one was enough for everything. This is just an extra step to make sure that hopefully, you know, touch wood, something happens one day, and nothing nasty happens to whoever is using the machine. And the machine is back in one piece. Um, just a, as a word of advice, if you just ever decided to disassemble this machine, which I totally do not recommend because again, it's dangerous and blah, blah, blah. I would recommend that you leave the, the four bolts at the bottom of the machine, which are fixing the actual heating plates on, um, on, on the bottom of the machine itself, to leave them loose while you fit the cover, because those bolts have a little bit of play and the, fitting, the fit here is quite tight. So that play actually helps to fit the top cover. Once you've done with the top cover, you can tighten the, the bottom four bolts. Not that I see why you shouldn't, but you know, let's double check the earth is actually connected to anything, everything. So earth seems to be fine. Let's just, let's just double check we don't have a, a short or anything. Let's test it. Okay, it's plugged in. Let's power it up. Uh, may have a problem with the thermocouple because it's now reading 650 degrees. Ah, oh, what have I done? Did I plug it backwards? It's, not, uh, it's probably unplugged. Right, let's see what's wrong with this. Oh well, yeah, that may not work as expected. Let's close it back again. And back in one piece, take two. So let's give it a go again. Yeah, that's better. Uh, set to, let's go to a lower temperature just to make sure it's actually reaching the temperature. Both plates are working. And the, the PID or PID circuit works fine. Okay, so that's the end of this video. Sorry, not much interesting solutions for this machine. I was hoping for um, an easier or some sort of solution. Again, probably the a solution to this, kind of, how can I say, fluctuating uh, whining noise. Is it worth investing time and money to redesign the power supply of this machine so that it's less accessible or not accessible at, at all to this mains variation? I don't think so. I'm sure there is a solution. If there is an easy one, which is, again, um, I, I'm not sure, uh, as easy as replacing that small transformer with some, which something which is delivering nine volts regulated or more stable somehow. I, I, I don't think you, I can even use the word regulator for, for nine volts AC. Please do let me know in the comments. I'd be more than happy to experiment if it's something that doesn't cost too much and it's easy to uh, implement on this machine. I was mostly, to be honest, concerned that if the small transformer was um, under spec, you know, the fan is doing that whining, uh, oscillating why noise, but I was more concerned about the electronics maybe failing in the long term uh, because of the uh, voltage not being the correct one. So for now, hopefully this is a bit safer than it was before. Well, thanks for watching and I hope to see you soon again.